hello guys it's Uchales here again and welcome to this course where we'll be designing a simple flyer using some of the principles that we have discussed in the previous courses principles like the adjustment layers we just talked about the shadows we just also talked about and some of other principles that we have been talking about throughout our courses so here is a simple flyer that we'll be recreating let me bring it let me bring it up so you will see it so here it is let me zoom in a little bit so you see so this is lebron james if you are a basketball fan you must know this guy or you should know this guy so um i really i really picked interest in this simple flyer design because somehow um recreating it will make you see the application of almost all that we have been talking about in the previous courses if you look closely at the design you see how the young man the skin has been given a different color but the clothes retain its colors then you can see how it's looking like he is inside this shape here all right and if you look closely under his arms you see the shadow of his arms so recreating this flyer will help us understand how the adjustment layer works how up and also put into practice the application of shadows then also we'll be applying clipping mask to create this effect of this young man where it looks like he is popping out of this irregular shape here so let's bring this into photoshop and get started so I'll just quickly go to the folder where I have that image. Let me look for it. So here it is. I just have to import it into Photoshop. So I already created an A5 sized um, document or artboard for the design. I don't need to tell you how I was able to create the document. You should know that by now. Then, also, maybe for those of us who must have forgotten, let me quickly give you a quick run through. I clicked on File, scroll down to New, then a window pops up. See A5 here because I've been using it for a while. So it has been here among the recent items or recent sizes I've used but if you don't have it here you can quickly go to here pr under print you can click print and you see different print sizes then c a6 a5 a3 a b5 a4 then you can just choose a5 so that's how i was able to do that and when you're done make sure the right color modes and the resolutions are there then you click create so so we need to have this on our mood board. That means we have to duplicate the art board. Since this image here is serving as our mood board. All right. So I just have to click on one end, drag down to the other end. And once I do that, I see the plus signs come out around the art board. And I can click on any of the plus facing any direction for a new art board to come out. And when I'm done, I can easily click again on the add board tool, at add board tool, then and select move tool again. Click here. So let me I'm clicking on the let me centralize the image we have in our mood board. So let's zoom in. I'm zooming in. Let me bring on screen keyboard so I can show you some of the keys I'm using. So to zoom in, I'm using control and plus i have to hold down control with my left hand or one of the fingers in my left hand then i'll use one of the fingers in my right hand to be hitting this plus sign here so that's how you zoom in that's the short key to zoom in so i'm zooming in now i want us to get in and analyze the flyer we want to design if you look closely the body of this young man has been made to be black and white while 
the clothes or his jersey and on and the clothes he's wearing the spots where he's putting on is retaining the its color all right also look at the bangle too is retaining its color but every other thing else is on black and white and if you look under his arms you can see the shadows under his arms and the shadows are placed under his arms because there is light coming from the top right so if you look at his body you know that the right place to place the shadow is under his arms because if you look at the, the top of his uh, body the shoulders you see that this part of the shoulder is brighter than this part of the shoulder or this part of the arm so the shoulder here is brighter than the arm here uh, near the elbow which instantly implies and suggests to you that the light should come from the top so it's important that when you're creating shadows you need to analyze the body of the object then that will help you to know the angle of the shadow to apply so and here the designer has been able to observe the body of this young man and seen that the top of his body or this part the head the neck the shoulders are brighter which instantly implies that light is coming from the top and since the light is coming from the top instantly the shadow has to be under so that's why the young the designer has been able to put shadows under the arms and it feels amazing so let's zoom out a bit to look more and the picture of this young man i was able to go online and get his pictures and but then this irregular shape here was a little bit trickish to get but then i got a clue to what it is because actually i didn't know what what shape is that uh but when i read this whatever it takes from for the land for ohio it instantly gave me a clue that this could be the map of ohio and when i looked it up on google I realized that this is actually the map of Ohio so we have two we have two um, assets or two resources that will be using to recreate this design and which is the, this picture this image of this uh, LeBron James and the map of Ohio and let's get started so first of all all we need to do is first of all create the background it's always good to start with the background right if you look closely the background is looking like it's looking a bit rough it's not as smooth as this background right in as much as this background is not white but yet it is looking a little bit rough so let me zoom in so you can quickly see it and understand this is pure white but this looks like gray or white that has a lot of you know um let me see what to call noise and that instantly suggests that we use an effect we call or effect filter we call noise to create that so to create that background first of all apply gradient to the background because the background is looking a bit grayish the background is looking a little bit grayish so let's apply a grayish gradient tool to the background so go to the gradient tool click on it before you do that make sure that this artboard is selected so that whatever you are applying whatever you are applying could work on the this artboard so now I have to make sure this artboard is selected right so to apply our gradient tool I need to first of all create a new layer I go down to this icon at the bottom here and create a new layer once the new layer is created I go to the gradient tool icon click on it then I quickly go to if I apply it now this is what is going to apply for us but this is not what we want right now this is what it applies for us this is not what we want we want um gray so i have to go over there and choose gray 
so just different shades of gray i can i can move the the i can move the uh color picker tool to the background here and keep sampling the colors of or keep sampling the colors of the background so that i can use it to create the colors we use for the gradient tool so i click double click on that and choose another color so i double click on this and drag it down so that it goes away and now it has gone away i move this slider to the extreme so we now have two different colors but they are mild colors so you might not notice the difference until you look closely let me zoom out by using Control and minus now let me double click on one end of the ad board to the other end then i release my hand and you see we have been able to create the gradient of the background but then it is still smooth let's zoom in it is still smooth where's my mouse oh. so it is still smooth so for us to really make it to be a little bit rough like this one you can compare the two this is smooth this is rough for us to make it a little bit rough i said we need to apply i said it before that we need to apply uh, a filter called noise filter so once this is highlighted we'll quickly go over to the filter menu up here click on it scroll down to where we see noise so once you get to this noise you move your slider to and choose add noise all right here are other options right but then we are going with add noise so on the add noise you move the sliders and keep watching it to see if it looks like what you have on your mood board all right so once you move it it shows you a preview of what you're going to get at the end of the day so we keep moving the sliders until we are okay with what we have or we have something that is really really close there are several options here if you click on you can try out either of these options uniform or gaussian uh you can also choose um monochromatic and keep moving your sliders to see how it goes okay if you uncheck monochromatic you get colored noise but then we don't need that colored noise all right we just need black and white noise so we go down again and while we compare so right now i'm looking at our background and also looking at the mood board to see how it goes so so far i think we have something that is really 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 close so i can click ok let me zoom in a little bit and see how close they are okay although it's not exactly 100 percent but they are quite close now so i can zoom out so the next thing we're going to do now is to bring in the picture of this young man lebron james so i'll go to my folder where i have his pictures and i look for it i scroll to the point and okay i've seen it here it is i just drag it into photoshop and i release it into our frame so i click enter on my keyboard so i have to resize this image So first of all we need to cut this guy out of the background because if you notice this part of his arms that is outside the map of ohio does not have a background so we need a version of him that is outside the background and we also need a version of him that has the background because if you look at this part that you look this part where we have him in the um map 
you can see the background is there with him all right so to create this effect we need two copies of this young man one copy of him without the background and another copy of him with the background so and how do we do that it's quite simple once we make sure we have gotten the actual size we have gotten the actual size of his frame or the actual size of his picture to what we want let me keep moving these sizes until i get what i want so once we feel that the size is now okay i click enter so i feel this size is now okay the next thing we're going to do is to duplicate the image layer and it's important we duplicate the image layer because we actually need two copies of the images one with background one without background so we just have to double click on the image layer scroll down until we get to the create new layer icon and release our hand from the mouse now we have two layers we now have two layers of the same image but you can't notice this because the other layer is directly on top of the two images are directly on top of each other so you can't tell that there are two images but if i double click on one and move it you see that there are actually two images like as you have seen now all right so let me use ctrl z and bring it back we need them to be on top of each other so for this effect to work so um we have to rename this um layer which is gradient background you we'll click enter then this is gradient background and i have to click on this layer double click to rename it to lebron james um lebron james with background then i have to go over to this layer double click on the name of the file and rename it lebron james with without background so that's way, that way it's easy, it's easy for me to detect which of the lebron james i'm working with so we are good to go so the next thing i'll do is to hide the visibility of this lebron james with background so i have to hide that visibility so i'll be working with this one that is without background you know this one i need to remove the background all right so to remove the background for us to remove the background there are so many methods we can use we can use the pen tool we can use the quick selection tool we can use the magic one tool or we can actually try to use the artificial intelligent option this subject this ai automatically selects the subject from an image so let's try that to see how it, how much accurate it can be if it's not accurate enough then we can go back to using other tools so let's zoom in to see how accurate this is so we can see that the every part of the image is okay the arms are okay all right so just this place that the selection has been a little bit weird but let's correct that to correct that now that we we are on the quick selection tool all we need to do is to choose okay it's on minus so now we have it on minus is subtract from selection that's that option so we need to subtract subtract this area from the selection so we have just have to click on that area i want to subtract from the selection and you see that area has been deselected then we see this place then you see this place this space in between here this space need to be selected all right so we need to move over to this add to selection so click on it then come back here and click on that space in between 
to see but unfortunately that place is not being selected i guess we need to try subtract from selection too let's try subtract from selection yes it is subtract from selection actually so okay let's it has now gone beyond what we want let me use ctrl z to get that back so this is now looking the selection is now okay so i have to also subtract this side also let me work on this here side so now the selection is looking so much more better so we are good to go so the next thing we are going to do let's zoom out Control minus to zoom out then i can easily I can easily I can just simply click on the layer mask tool here and everything is masked out let's zoom in and see how our selection is how smooth our selection is and as you can see the selection is not smooth look at the edges the edges are so rough the edges are rough so this is not a good idea at all so let's um let me click on this the edges are not smooth so let's try to work on the edges and to do that i use ctrl z now the selection is still active so we'll, we'll go over to the select here select option at the top here scroll down to select a mask all right okay now we are here all we have to do is simply go over to smooth here and try to smoothen out the edges let's see how that goes so whatever thing you're doing make sure you're looking at the sampling so now the edges are smooth we just need to come here click uh select layer mask and click ok So if you zoom in, let's zoom in and see how the selection is. So the selection is not really that cool. It is not that cool. The edges are not good. See how sharp these edges are compared to this one so we won't work with this let's let's control z control z let's undo this and um, to remove this selection i just have to use control d all right so i have removed the selection now we have seen that that option of um allowing the artificial intelligence to do the selection for us didn't come out well because the background is not 100% plain there are some noise in the background like there are some people although they are faded out but they are blood out but then they are not allowing the selection or the AI tool artificial intelligence tool to select the subject properly so this is where the pen tool comes into play so pen tool allows us to select from a very busy background and allowing us to maintain smooth selection so once this um, pen tool is selected we go to the top there and click path so we zoom in a bit so we can get clearer um clearer sight of our edges so i choose to start from the the left arm so i go further a bit i double click hold down and drag out then i use my alt key to keep adjusting that so i double click and drag out yeah if you really don't understand how we have been able to well, how i'm able to use this um pen tool to be double clicking and dragging out then you need to watch the video where you need to rewatch the 
um, pen tool application of the in, we need to watch the course where we actually dealt with our pen tool and the application of pen tool so so just to get the all edges right i always double click and drag out so then now i'm using i'm holding down on my alt key to reduce this so i go over to another edge and double click then drag out so i'm holding my alt key again and i'm adjusting this all right so i'll keep doing this until selection is perfect i drag out until i get the edge right then i hold on the alt key to reduce it then redirect the part of the selection so So this I'm holding the alt key again to because I'm coming to this edge to click on that. I'm using the alt key again. Double click, drag out. So and while I'm dragging out, I'm looking at the paths the selection part to make sure it's accurate so I will click here again and I drag out So anywhere you feel you make a mistake, let me zoom in. Anywhere you feel you make a mistake, you can always control Z to undo the mistake. Then you go again until you get it correct. All right. So just the way I went back here, just because I didn't select that ripple on the clothes very well, that folding on the clothes. So I had to go back to correct it. I just use control Z. So, Ctrl Z. See there, I use the Ctrl Z again because I didn't like the selection I made there. Let me use Ctrl Z here again. I didn't like the selection I'm making there. Let me zoom in so that we get clearer picture of what we're doing. So I use use um double click and drag out here again. Then I change the direction. I double click here too and drag out. I change this back again. Then I double click here too and drag out. No, Control Z. I double click here first and drag out so now we are done with the second arm so i need to change the direction of this so that we can I need to change the direction of the pen path so that we can continue on another direction so the pen tool is really amazing it helps us with precise selection you know i actually use the I tried using the oh let me use control z to undo this i tried using that ai tool first because i wanted to see if that would help us you know with a quick selection but since that couldn't help you have to fall back to the pen tool 
So So just keep holding and dragging out. See, that's is that simple. I use the alt key to change the direction. Yeah. So wherever you feel you made a mistake, use always, always use the control Z to get back and retry the selection. Just double click and drag out is very simple. So we are almost done. We are almost oh as bad control Z. We are almost done. Right. So I so selecting the fingers. So I think I need to move this point in and I just hold down on my control key and adjust that point. Then I hold on my alt again to adjust the direction of the selection. Then I double click and drag out again. I double click and drag out again. I double click. And double click and drag out again. Then I double click and drag out. I hold my alt and change the direction. Then I double click and I drag out again. So let me zoom out. We've been able to make clean selection. Then I have to hold my control and hit the enter key. Then now we have our selection showing up here. Then I just go straight to this layer mask tool and I click on the layer mask. And you see, we have a smoother selection. All right? Although. Let me zoom in. You can see that the hand here. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. So you can see what I'm trying to say. We can see that the hand here, there is a black, a black spot here. Let's take care of that. I'll go again with the selection tool. Alright. Then make another selection so i click the control and enter once more why my my make sure while i'm doing this you also notice that the layer mask panel is highlighted here so I'll now go use the brush tool and hide that part. Uh, make sure, see my brush, the flow is 1%. I have to take it up to 100%. 
then make sure i want to hide this part so i need to make sure that this place is set on black so i hit x on my keyboard or i hit this arrow here that has two heads so x on my keyboard changes to, to black and i come here and i paint in between so as i'm painting i'm only painting the painting or as i'm painting in between i'm only clean off that part of our selection other part of the image is not selected other part of the image that is not selected is not affected by what i just did because there is a selection active and it's only that part of the selection is being affected so i have to click ctrl d to make that selection inactive so if you zoom in you also notice that some part of the selections that the black background is showing if you look at the edges of the neck you can see a little bit black here if you look at the arms as well you can see a little bit black here but then that will that won't be an issue for us because if you look at our design the hands will be inside will be inside the the if you look at the mood board where we're looking at you see that the arms will be inside the map of ohio so we are more concerned about the path that will be outside because that's what we'll be creating with this um layer without with this image layer without background so since that part that will be so since this part that we have seen those black edges are the part that will be inside there yeah, well don't have issues with that but where it is an issue can quickly um why why the um, layer panel why the why why the layer mask panel is active i can quickly go to um select option up here scroll down to select a mask then go over to shift edge i can shift the edge of the selection move it inside a bit so that the black part will go away and once i do it the edges of the selection will move in a little bit and the black part or the unwanted part will just go away but since there's no need for that i'm not doing that i won't be doing that right now so let's scroll out a little bit and see how the design is faring control zero to bring all our designs to fit the screen so we are now seeing our mood board here and the ad board where we are working on so at this point we'll go back to our layer panel we'll go back to our layer panel and if we put on the visibility of the lebron james with background his image with background you can see that it's still looking like we have one image and why is that that is because the other one we cut out is background is directly on top the one with background so they are on top of each other pixel by pixel so you can't see there is a difference it is looking like one image because they are directly on top of each other so you see how but in reality there are actually two images there as you can see so control z let me take that back so far we have been able to do two things we have been able to work on the background like create the background of our design and we were able to do that by going to the gradient tool we created gradient colors with two shades of um, gray and we are able to apply the noise filter by going to this filter menu up here and choosing the add noise filter then we added the noise and we also brought in the picture of Le the image of lebron james and cut out lebron james from the background in one of the duplicates so at this point we're going to the next step where we'll bring in the map of ohio which is this irregular shape here and insert this image into the map of ohio hello guys welcome back to the second part of this course so let's continue and finish up this design
and this is the point where we bring in the map of ohio and the map of ohio is this irregular shape we see here on our mood board so let's go into the folder where we have this map and bring it in so look at it here i drag double click drag and bring it into photoshop then i release my hand and once i release my hand our map instantly appears right here on our artboard then i click enter so if you notice our map has a white background unlike here we are on our mood board look closely on the design we are trying to replicate the, there is no background like the map does not have a background but it has a background here so that means we're going to remove this white background and since the background is just white it is not a complicated background it's not a busy background so the selection will be so easy in this case um tools like this ai tool here can easily work here right because the background is not busy it's just a plain background so this ai tool here can easily work here but then instead of using that i would like us to i would like to show us another tool that you can use to make our selections which is the quick selection tool all right the reason why i'm using different tools at different times for our selection is just for us to you know see how we can use other tools to achieve the same result in photoshop you know that's one of the beautiful things about photoshop is that there are so many ways you can use to achieve whatever you want to achieve so instead of us to use this subject tool here that i've been talking about for a while now let's apply let's use the quick selection tool that is here all right so either the quick selection tool or the magic one tool either of them will work for it but then let's use the quick selection tool so once we click on that um tool you can see that our cursor has changed to a circle with a plus sign in between in the middle just the same way we increase or decrease the size of a brush tool i can actually increase or decrease the size of the tool by using the square bracket so let me show you what i mean by the square bracket on our on-screen keyboard so this is the left square bracket and this is the right square bracket so if i hit this right square bracket i increase the size of the tool and if i click this left square bracket i decrease the size of the tool so here we go let me click the right square bracket you can see the size of the tool has been increased then if i click on the left one it has decreased to use this tool is very simple if you are using a mouse you just have to left click hold down and drag over the area you want to select and the tool instantly recognizes the boundaries of that subject and quickly select them or if you are using a um, touchpad of your keyboard or touchpad of your laptop just like I am using because I'm not using any mouse at the moment you just have to double click hold down and drag across the area of the subject you want to select and instantly the tool will quickly identify the boundaries of that subject and select it for you so let's do that right now so I've, i'm double clicking right now and i'm dragging my hand a bit you see that i just moved my hand a bit and the tool instantly was able to identify all the edges of or the boundaries of our subject so you see how amazing it is and just like the name implies quick selection it was able to add to select our subject quickly so this tool works best when you want to select subjects from a plain background this tool here too the subject here also works best when you want to select subjects from plain background as well so 
and also this magic one two two works best when you want to select subject from plain background but then we use the pen tool when we want to select subjects from busy background so i hope you remember that so let's cut out this image from the background to cut it out we can just simply click on our layer mask here and once we do that you can see that our selection has been cut out let me zoom in to see how neat the cut out is by looking at the edges of our by looking at the edges of our subject so somehow the edges are not that smooth if you look here you can see that there is um you can see some white the background here the you uh, can see there is some um, background here there is the white background is visible here so to take care of all this i can can just once the layer mask is still highlighted here on the um layer panel then we can now go to select go down to sub select a mask then we'll come into this tool and work on our edges to make it as smooth as possible so we'll come into this tool to you know fine tune the our selection and make sure that it is perfect first of all you can notice that somehow at the edges of our selection let me zoom in here at the bottom here if you notice at the edges of our selection we have some kind of um, the white background is also visible at the edges of the selection so to take care of that let's zoom out we we'll now have to use the refine refine edge tool which is this tool here the second tool here the refine edge tool we can also increase or decrease this tool just the same way we increase or decrease brushes by using the square or left bracket all right so what we just need to do here is to click at the edge of this uh, map once we click on the edge of the map the tool instantly keeps uh, refining the edge for us so that's what i'm doing right now i'm double clicking at the edge and i keep following the edge and the tool will automatically identify all the errors at the edge and fix them so once i have gone a while i release my hand then to allow the tool to work so the tool is you can see that it is loading because it is trying to clean off the edges so if you realize um we now have smoother and cleaner edges let me zoom in so you can see it we now have better edges um you see uh, the edge of our selection is now or the edge of our subject is now much more smoother see where we stopped before i release my hand from the mouse and you can see the white here has been re removed like the white background that was at the edge has been removed and if you look here where we stopped some are still present here so with it zoom in here let me try and remove it again so that in case you don't understand what happened previously you get it now so as i said to use this tool you just have to double click hold down and follow the edge of your subject so i'm double clicking on my um touchpad on my laptop and i'm following the edge of the selection now so as i keep going the tool will keep just be careful so that you don't go out of the selection so once i am here see let me release my hand to allow the tool to work so if you notice that those white um background that has been those white part of the background that somehow has been at the edge of this selection they have all gone so this is how amazing this tool is it works 
is refining just just as the name, the name implies is replying is refining the edge of our selection if you remember that's also the tool we use to remove if you remember that's the tool we also use to remove background from here so you should be used to this tool by now it's not a new tool so you just have to carefully follow the background just keep following the background So you just have to carefully keep following the edges of the subject. So, so this is really, really easy. Just have to do that carefully. Our subject is now okay our selection is now perfect it has better edges now but then in case you still feel your edge the edge of your selection is still rough you can just go to the smooth option here this slide here and move it up a bit and smoothing out the edges of your subject so or you can just Keep moving it as much as you want and keep looking at your map or the edge of your selection to see how it goes then once you're comfortable with what you have you can now finally click ok but then i'll leave mine at 13 just to you know just to work on some but i'll leave mine at 13 but I'll leave mine at 13. So let's before let's click OK. But then before we click OK, now we are done with refining the edge of the selection. Let's make sure that the output is set to new layer. Because I want this to be on a new layer, right? So I click OK. I wanted our selection to be on a new layer without the background not i didn't want it to be with this um, layer mask that is why i chose that option and you can see the one that has the layer mask is the tool automatically switched off the visibility so so if you look closely let me zoom in so that you can see what i'm what is happening here if you look closely now let me switch on the visibility of the first image we cut out which is this one here the first map we cut out from the background so yeah you can see the edge you can see that it has white edges but now that we have taken it into select a mask and worked on it refine the edges you can see now that the edges are better or the edge the edge is better and there's no white um, background attached to the edge now so since we are not making use of this we can just delete it double click and move it to the and delete it all right move it to this icon here at the bottom right so now we have only the map that has been cut out from the background and that is what we want to work with so let me zoom out by using ctrl minus So now that we have zoomed out, we also want to make sure that the map is exactly the size of the map too on our mood board. So, and to make that happen, I just have to double click, bring in this map into our mood board, then reduce the opacity so that I'll see the map behind. Now the opacity has been reduced. I'm now seeing the map behind. Then I can now 
um, start to align them together so that it will be exactly the same size all right so let me now i'm now on the edge of this map and i'm now reducing the size until it fits into the size of the the original map on the image we are or on design we are trying to replicate so i keep making adjustments i'm currently using the up and down left and right arrows to keep adjusting them i mean these arrows here this up down up up down left and right these four keys i'm using them also to move you know move the map to make sure it fits into the one we have on on our mood board so I, I think it's okay now then i just have to bring back the opacity up to 100 percent then i move this back into our original i move this back into our artboard but then while i'm moving it my hand is still on my touchpad so which is my hand is still holding down on the um on the map of ohio to before i release my hand to drop into our design i have to hold on the shift key so what the shift key does is to lock the movement of that particular subject or that particular object within a particular axis so you see i can't move up or down i can only move left within a straight line all right it helps us to move things within straight line but my hand is my left hand one of the fingers one of the fingers of my left hand is on the shift key while my right hand is dragging the subject or dragging the image or object just the map of ohio so the shift key helps us to lock the movement within a particular axis so i can't move up or down because i'm holding down on the shift key so why i'm doing this it helps us to align the map of ohio to make sure that it is placed on a straight line with the map on our mood board all right so that the map will be on the same height with the one on our mood board that's just the essence of applying that when i have moved it and i'm comfortable with the positioning i release my hand from the shift key and i click enter so it is that simple so right now we have the map of ohio ready to be used then if you look at our mood board that's the original design we have here we can see that the map we, we can see that the image of lebron james with background is inside the map so how do we do this now to make this happen we need to take the image of lebron james with background remember we have two images here one without background one with background now we have to take that image of the one with background and move it up let the layer be above the layer of the map then we have to move it up so we can create a clipping mask we have i have taught you how to create clipping masks in the past we are doing that right here again so i hold down on my alt key on the keyboard with my hand on the alt key my left one of the fingers on my left hand on on, on the alt key then i move my cursor in between the lines that is separating the the layers of the map of ohio and lebron james with background so watch and once i do that watch the cursor will change from the icon of a hand to a white square with a black arrow that is pointing down so once your cursor changes to that what you have to do is to click so if you're using a mouse just left click and but then if you're using a um laptop just like i am using you have to then tap on your touchpad and once you do that if you notice 
here look at our image the image of look at our designer you can see that the image of lebron james the one with background ha, is now inside the map of ohio in fact let me switch off the visibility of the lebron james without background because somehow it's interfering so so you see what really happened so now the visibility of that one is switched off let me undo this clipping mask we have we just did so we we'll just undo it using the same method holding down on the alt key and hovering in between the two lines in between the two layers and clicking so you see now we have our image outside the map and once i hover again in between the two layers the icon changes and my cursor changes and i click again then i get Le Le lebron james inside the map of ohio so you see now we have him inside the map of ohio let me open the visibility of the lebron james without background once i click on it you see this lebron james is outside that map so so somehow we are getting closer to this effect that was used here the part of lebron james that is outside and the other part of lebron james that is inside all right so somehow um this layer is at is below these two layers i don't want i want the layer of lebron james without background to be at the top so we double click hold down and move it to the top so now we are good so now we have the image of lebron james at the top so if you look closely at these two designs you can see that they are almost getting identical but then we have a little problem and that problem is this that this lebron james without background also have the lower part of his body inside the map look here we have him here inside the map that's why the map is showing here but here we have him outside the map so how do we take care of this we do that simply by deleting this part of lebron james that is outside the map so to do that let's make sure that the layer mask is highlighted the layer mask on the lebron james without background is highlighted then i go and select my brush tool increase the size of the brush tool all right using the right square bracket and i begin to delete make sure like here you make sure that the foreground is set to black right because if it is set to white instead of deleting it will now be um making visible the background of this lebron james that we actually cut out before so let me use ctrl z to undo that in fact to avoid that scenario where we will mistakenly uh, paint in back the background that we cut out let me uh, remove this layer mask entirely from from this lebron james with our background so to do that i'll just once the layer mask is highlighted i'll go to select go to select a mask and simply go to the output and make sure it's on new layer then i click ok so i just simply want to send this new selection to a new layer that's all i don't want it to be with the layer mask because i don't want us to have the possibility where we mistakenly paint in the background that we just cut out here so let me delete this because we won't be needing it so now we just have lebron james on a we just have the lebron james that's cut out from the background and there's no layer mask attached to it so since we want to hide some part of lebron james we we'll still have to go um, down to this bottom here and add a layer mask here click on the layer mask icon so can add the layer mask then now we have the layer mask make sure we have this set to white like the top color here is black sorry make sure we have the for you set the foreground color that the color at the top make sure it is black so you can 
click on these two edged arrows here to turn it to black or you can click x on your keyboard x let me show you what the x this x we can use this x to keep switching between the red the black or white so now we have it on black remember black hides white reveals and in this case i'm trying to hide some part of this lebron james so before you start painting make sure that the layer mask thumbnail is always selected if it is not selected if you're selecting the thumbnail of lebron james when you, once you start painting you realize that the brush tool will start painting in this black color here we'll start painting in black all right let's use ctrl z to undo that and that is not what you want so always make sure that what is selected is the layer mask so and when the layer mask is selected once you start applying the brush tool then it will start deleting or start hiding some part of lebron james so let me control z um let me adjust the settings of our brush to 100 let's move it to 100 percent let's begin to delete so right now i'm deleting some part of lebron james the lower part so that we can only see what is under so now we can now see the lower part of the map So let me zoom in on the arms. You can see that there's there's been a mistake on the arms. The arms, the the hand of LeBron James is not looking weird. So to sort that out, let me reduce my brush. I'm reducing the size of the brush by using the left the left bracket, the left square bracket. Then you remember black hides and white reviews. So I'm going here now to change this to white because we're trying to review the arms. It was mistakenly hidden. So once I'm painting over the hand there, you see the arms is back. The hand is back. So I zoom in again. To take a closer look at that place to make sure it is okay. I change this to black again. Just to take care of some tiny details there. Then I zoom in very well. Reduce the size of my brush. Reduce it to reduce it smaller and change this to white as well to work on this part of the arm. I change it. let me change the type of my brush I don't like this type of brush I'm using let me use a hard round brush instead of a soft round brush so so I like what I have here this looks perfect so you see we now have exactly the same thing we have on our original design let me change this to a move tool now for you to see what for you to understand what's really going on here now it's looking like we have lebron james that a part of him is inside the image and his hands is popping out you know we we're able to achieve this by using two images of lebron james if i switch off the other image of lebron james with background the one that we originally put into design you see that the other top part of lebron james is just lebron james without the lower half of his body so we used um, lebron james with background to sort out all other part of design that is inside the map and we use the other lebron james without background to take care of the other part of his body that is outside the map of ohio 
so this is we have just duplicated his image to do this trick so that's that for this course and let's run a quick uh, review of what we've been able to do here in this part two we've been able to introduce the map of ohio into our design and we've also been i've been able to show you how you can use clipping masks and also a duplicate of the image of lebron james the one that has no background to create this effect where we have lebron james which is looking like a lower part of his body is inside the map and the top part of his body is outside the map almost looking like he's popping out of the map of ohio so i also want to remind you that this effect was possible because the size of lebron james with background and the size of lebron james without background are the same like the two images are the same size now check this out if i had reduced the size of lebron james if they are not the same size like one is smaller than each other you see it's not going to work it's going to look obvious here that something is not right or if i make it bigger it's not going to work it is not going to synchronize with what we have under so they all have to be the same size i'm using ctrl z to undo this now so they both have to be the same size right so that this will work so we're just creating an illusion here all right so it's just a trick if you also notice at i just noticed something now at the back at the bottom of at the bottom of this image we have a part of the map that is showing see here we have a part of the map that is showing because probably the body of the cloth of uh, the image of lebron james is not big enough to cover this part that is why it is showing in fact we can take care of that by reducing the size of the map a little bit just a tiny little bit or increasing the size of lebron the two lebron james a little bit so and the funny thing is whenever you're you're trying to increase one lebron james you have to increase the two because both of them are working together they both have to be the same size at the same time so when you're increasing one lebron james will be increasing the other copy of lebron james so let me just decrease the size of the map and that should take care of of that So now I have it decreased. Let me take it up a little bit. I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move this up. So I'm gradually moving it up until I'm satisfied. So I'm moving it down now because I didn't like what I was seeing when I moved it up. Let me move it to the left a bit. Let me zoom out to make sure it's almost it's still looking like what we have on the on our mood board. So this is let me try to increase it a little bit. Okay, so since this is so much better now. That bottom uh, part of the map that is showing is no longer showing because we actually adjusted the size of our map a little bit. So let me look at the arm of LeBron James to make sure that our selection there is still okay. Okay, it's not okay. Um, let's go click on the layer mask then go to the brush tool make sure it is on black no white white we are trying to reveal some part of the arms so then i paint over so think
let me zoom out to make sure it is the same thing we have on our mood board yes this is okay so this is so much better now So that's that for this course. See you in the next part where we will finalize this design. Hello guys, it's Ichalens here again and welcome to the third part of this course where we are recreating a flyer design. So let's get right into it and finish off this design. So right from part one all through part two, we have been trying to recreate this simple flyer here and here in this final part we have come to this extent and what we need to apply now is the black and white adjustment layer because if you look closely at the image we are trying to recreate the arms and the head and even the background are now black and white except the clothes or the jersey the lebron james is putting on so let's get right into it so before i bring in the adjustment layer i have to first of all click on this topmost layer this is because in photoshop a new layer always comes up above the layer of an existing layer that is highlighted what i mean is that if this layer is what is highlighted is currently highlighted when you try to put up a new layer it will come directly above it so new layers always come directly above the current layer that is highlighted or the current selected layer so let me use ctrl z to undo that so in this case we want our effect to be at the topmost so that it will be visible or the effect will be seen on the rest of the layers so we want it to be at the top that means the current topmost layer should be selected so once it's selected we'll go ahead and go to our adjustment layer which is this circle here with half of it white and black i click on it then i look for black and white so here it is i click so instantly our design has been turned to black and white but then if you look closely look at the body of Leron James look at the body where he look at the part of his body that is black and white you see that somehow it is looking different from ours so you can only create something as close to this by adjusting some of the properties of the black and white so you use this slider to adjust the reds the reds you use this slider to adjust the greens and so on and so forth so all the reds on on the on this um design will be affected by this slider okay let me show you something that we might not be applying here but just for the sake of knowledge look at this um box here tint if you click on this box instead of changing your color here to black and white it actually tints it it gives it a black and white with you know a shade of whatever color you decide so if you go to blue it adds a shade of blue on top of your black and white it just tints your black and white with whatever shade of color you choose so you can also use to add awesome effect to your designs if you want so we are not applying that here but i just decided to bring that to your knowledge you can apply that in maybe in one of the designs in the future but then back to what um so back to our sliders so if i move this slider up you see the red areas on the body of lebron james are becoming lighter but then we don't want that we want the red areas to be darker So 
basically i'll be adjusting these sliders and be looking at his body to make sure to make sure that the result we are getting is looking close to what we have there this slider is only affecting the blue area of his clothes this is the blue area the edge of his jersey and the blue band the, the blue band here so on his wrist so if you look closely at our design or our own artboard you see that it's only the edges of the clothes and the blue band on his hand that is being affected by this slider so we've tried our best but somehow our best is not still good enough we still haven't gotten this shiny effect that is on his body like look at the the place where we have the highlight on his body is more shiny than on our own art board so i think well, let's introduce one more adjustment layer which is the brightness and contrast so let's try to use that okay this should work okay i think this sh should work so while i move the sliders i keep looking at the images i'm not even looking at the sliders all right i'm just looking at the images while my hands go up and down the sliders to see if i'm getting the results i want so there's a problem right the brightness and contrast adjustment layer is affecting even our background and we don't want that we want the it just affect the head and the arms of Le lebron james so which layer is in charge of the arms and the head it is this particular layer of Leron James without background. That means we want this effect to be only um, visible or we want the effect to only work on Lebron James without background. So to make that happen, I have to bring the brightness and contrast layer directly above lebron james without background layer so here it is now we have it directly above then to make this effect just for this layer only we have to create a clipping mask again so the clipping mask makes this effect only visible on this lebron james without background copy so to make that happen I just have to hold my alt key and move my cursor in between the layer the brightness and contrast layer and the lebron james without background layer so once i move it you see my cursor has changed to that white box and arrow, and arrow down and i just click and instantly our background is now darker the effect is now only visible on the on this layer it doesn't affect any other layer it only affects this single layer this is also how you can make effects or this is how you can limit your effect to just one layer let's go for that for you to see that this really affects only that layer watch if i move my slider um, to make the design darker you see that lebron james you see only that his head and arms are only affected by these changes the background is no longer affected you see i made him brighter it only affects that layer
so let me keep moving my sliders and paying attention to our mood board okay this looks close enough so one more thing we are going to do now is make the clothes he's wearing you know make it to be colorful so that let the black and white not affect the, the clothes he's wearing the wristband and um this red i don't know if, if i should call it glove or whatever on his arms on the right arms so how do we do that simple now if you realize each of the effects from the adjustment layers have um, layer masks so that means you can actually delete some parts or hide the effect on any part of the image if you wish let me show you what i mean now check on this black and white if i click on the layer max thumbnail just as i've done i click on the brush tool then my cursor has changed the right to a circle which is the brush tool let me increase it by clicking on the right square bracket so you can see what i'm doing if i begin to paint okay um look here we have white at the top white reviews and black height so we are trying to hide the effect on a part of the image so i want to change this to black by clicking on this arrow that has on this arrow two headed arrow so once i begin to paint you see that the effect has been deleted from some part of the image which I just painted on. Which is exactly how we are going to get the black and white effect removed from his jersey and the wristband. So let's use Ctrl Z to undo what we just did. Using the brush tool to try to remove that black and white effect from it, the cloth will not get us a good result because our strokes might not be precise what i mean by that is even if we try to even if we try to reduce the size of the brush tool and try to paint along you see that for some places for some places our um, brush stroke might enter his skin like if you look even if you try so hard it might take you a lot of time for you to be precise i'm trying as as much as i can to be precise so let's zoom in if you look closely you see that some part of his skin has been affected so let me change this to white so that i'll remove the part of that uh, the part of his skin so that i'll bring the effect back on some part that part of his skin where it was removed so so using a hard edge brush not a so soft round brush hard round brush you can actually get this done but then Control, control Z, but then it requires a lot of effort. So let me use con, uh, Control minus to zoom out. So we can do this, or there's another way we can also do this. Let me use Control Z to undo all all that we have done. Let me zoom in. So I've used Control Z, and we are back to black and white now here is another way that you can remove the effect from some part of the images by using the pen tool first of all with the pen tool you make a selection around the area that you want the effect to be removed from now after that selection has been made then you begin to paint and when you begin to paint photoshop will only apply whatever you're painting inside that selection within the boundaries of that selection so whatever thing you do outside that selection will not work 
Now let me, let's let's do that. You can actually still use the form, first method we use by just using the paintbrush and carefully, you know, zoom in, carefully remove um, the part of the black and white or the part of that effect, just as we did before. But then here is another method you can use. This method is more precise. Remember, you have to change this to path before doing it because we are actually we are actually trying to create a selection with the pen tool so you go to the edge just the same way we use the pen tool to make selection you begin to make selections you double click and drag out so i double click and drag out I zoom in so that I can see the edges properly and make my selections effectively. So I hold my Alt key and adjust these handles so that I can get better selection. So you double click and drag out. I hold my Alt key again and adjust the handle towards the direction I want it to go. I double click and drag out. So I move again. So I have to also follow the edges of the map as well. So I also have to follow the edges of the map. Sometimes it can take a while, but then it's always worth it. It helps you make cleaner selections or precise application of your effects. Now let me, I use, I, my left hand is on the control key and I'm using that to adjust the position of this selection now on the alt key my left hand is on the alt key and i'm adjusting the handle to the direction of my next point of selection so i keep going it's, it looks like it's taking a lot of time but then it's always worth it to take the time to do the right thing or to get a better output so why i'm showing you all the different methods you can use to achieve this is because you don't know the kind of design you might be faced with tomorrow or the, the kind of background the design might have and you will need to make a precise selection that is where you remember how important or you remember that you can use the pen tool to make that happen so then if you don't have all the time you can still do it the lazy way by using the brush tool directly just zoom in take your time and begin to paint where you don't want the effect to be visible on or most of the time, despite the time it takes, I really enjoy, I really like Ctrl Z. I really like using the pen tool because of the precision it gives me with my selections. So I'm holding on the Alt key to change the handle. You know the handle decides the the direction our selection goes so so I'm adjusting the handles for our next selection
so let me move the hand upwards because our next selection is going upwards so as i said the handle or the direction of the handle determines the direction our selection will go so i always have to adjust the handles to move it in the direction of our next selection so our selection is complete so let's zoom out a bit then i'll here i'll have to click control and enter so now we have a selection path then i'll go still choose my brush tool make sure that black is at the top because i'm trying to review or uh, sorry black hides and white review so i'm trying to hide this effect on the body so i just have to start painting without even see if i even if i paint outside like i'm doing now you see that the effect that the brush tool is not working outside the areas or outside the boundaries of my selection that is one of the beautiful things about using selections to you know wipe some areas of the layer mask so whatever you are doing will only be visible on within the boundaries of the selection only. So even if your hand is shaky, it doesn't matter. You still end up having a neat, perfect job. So even if your hand is going this way or your hand is going outside the selection, it will be visible. But if you didn't apply the selection first before trying to use the brush tool, you always you zoom in, slowly paint, trying to be careful. So that is one of the things that um, using paint tools helps us do. Once you just make the selection, you can speed up your workflow instantly. Just quickly. apply the brush tool and you're good to go so i'll just click ctrl and d and our selection is gone so we have fine we have been able to remove the effect from we have been able to remove the effect from his clothes so let's do that again for the wristband let's go back to our pen tool So let me hold the alt key with my left fingers or one of the fingers on my left hand to adjust the handle and I click and drag out until I'm comfortable with what I'm seeing yes i am comfortable with this and I release my hand so i hit control and enter to turn that into a selection always make sure that the layer mask thumbnail is selected before using the brush tool so i apply it once more and i use control d to remove the selection then i zoom out again i go to the the hand the right hand Let me zoom in. Let me zoom out a little bit. I think that's too close. Go back to the pen tool and begin to select again. Let me do control. Let me use the alt key to change the direction of the handle. 
we use control Z. I think that was too too far. So I begin to target. Begin to target the you know angles. So like here is another angle. And here let me use the alt key to change the direction of that handle. And here as oh sh and here as well. So let me adjust the handle backwards because our selection will be going backwards. So control Z. Let me this handle. Let me adjust it. The alt key again. Let me select around his shoulders. Let me use the alt key again to adjust this. Then let me join the selection. Control Z. Let me add one more step before. Yes, I think this is way much better. So I hit Control Enter, then select my brush tool and begin to paint. Here we go. So Control D. Then there is also a bango by this right hand and we're going to select it out as well so So control enter and I go to the brush tool and paint. Then control D. Then I zoom. Let me zoom out. So we are getting closer and closer and closer. Somehow, if you look at the body of, um, if you look at our mood board, the jersey here is looking darker than, than ours. Like the dark spots or the dark places, the shadows on the body are more visible than here. Look under his arm, see the dark shadows are really, really strong than on ours uh, on the one we have been able to do so we'll, we'll come to that and we'll sort that out by using adjustment layers so let me let's look for adjustment layers that can help us work on that let's try curves or no levels so the levels adjustment layer this is on our RGB, so it's affecting all the colors. No, this is not what we want. So I move this back. Control Z. I move it back to where it was. So let's let me try applying this only on the red. So I click on this place where we have the RGB. I go to the red. I click on red. And I start moving the sliders. And while I move the sliders, I pay attention to the red part of 
in his sign, which is his jersey. So the red part now is getting the red part is getting almost the feel of what we have on our mood board. Like the shadows there are getting darker. Let me close the visibility. Let me let me try something else. Let me try brightness and contrast one more time, but this time it will affect the entire design because it's at the top. Okay. Think this works. So let me try another adjustment layer, color balance. So I don't like this, let me delete it. Yes, let me delete it. So I think the yellow, the yellow on on the James is too vibrant compared to the lay, yellow here. So I need to work on that. Let me go to the hue. Remember the adjustment layer we used to adjust colors, the hue and saturation. So let's go there. The hue and saturation. So this time around, we just want to adjust this yellow. To a different shade of yellow so we want to change only the color of yellow and not every other color now see if you begin to apply this see that every other color on the cloth is affected the cloth is now blue so now it's now green this is not what we want we just want the name james to be affected where we have the yellow so ctrl z let's bring this back to zero so how do we get that done see this hand here that is pointing here click on it once you click on it your cursor will change to an eye dropper tool so you go to the color you want to change Let's zoom in so you see what is happening. The color we want to change is yellow, right? You click on the yellow. So if you notice here, the yellow area of this slider has this slider here. Look here. So what this means is that whatever effect we apply will not be only affecting the yellow part of this image. Now check this out. See, the yellow part is only being affected by whatever thing we are doing. So you see how cool, how cool this is. So let's zoom out by using Ctrl minus. Let's begin to adjust the sliders. So that it will look close to what we have on the left or on our mood board here. Yeah. So we can also adjust the saturation of that particular color. You can make it light or dark. So everything is up to you. You can make it whatever you want. But in this case, we have a guide. We can't just make it what we want. We have a mood board we are looking at. So we have a design we are trying to recreate. So we have to look at what we have on the design. 
so these two colors are now very very identical i made the yellow lighter and adjusted saturation also adjusting the color as well so this looks way much better and let me close this so let me zoom out a bit let me zoom in so you remember that the noise effect we applied on our background let's let me also apply that on the body of lebron james because somehow i think this was applied on the body of lebron james if you zoom in you can see that his body is not that smooth there's some a bit of noise on his body so this could be noise or some texture overlay but then let's zoom out let me So let me click on his body and go over to filter the add noise then add noise then begin to zoom in we begin to not zoom in we begin to increase the slider until we get what we want So this is too extreme we have to go out a little bit Let me zoom in. The effect has to be a little bit mild on him. So let's click. Okay, let's leave it at 11, 11.0. Okay, this is 11.07. Let's leave it at 11. So let me zoom out. So we are getting something a little bit closer. So somehow we have been able to achieve something really close to what we have in our mood board. But then it's not 100%. We still have, you know, more intense highlights on our original image. If you look, the shoulders are brighter than our shoulders here, which looking darker, a bit darker. So... We can actually take care of it by using another adjust by introducing another brightness and contrast adjustment layer but this time there's a trick i want to show you here we can use two brightness and contrast here we can use one brightness and contrast to make his lower arm darker then we can use another brightness and contrast to make the top part lighter that means we use two brightness adjustment layer and make one visible at the top part of his arm and make the other one visible at the bottom part of his arm let's introduce another brightness and contrast that will only be applicable to that layer we can just come here and click this here this is the uh, clipping mask icon it's only applicable to this uh, Lebron James without background, but then it is brighter. We we'll make it brighter. So, on the body of LeBron James, we've been able to achieve, achieve something that is close to what we have here. You see, we have stacked two brightness um, adjustment layers on top of each other. We have used one to take care of the highlights, and we have used one to take care of the shadows. So, that, that's one of the beautiful things about adjustment layers. You can stack them up. You can stack them up above each other. So... 
But then, making that brighter has also affected the body of, you know, the clothes of LeBron James. We don't want this intense red. So, we we'll have to go to this particular brightness, brightness adjustment layer that made this cloth brighter. Then, we quickly go to our brush tool to hide that effect on the cloth. So, we we'll have to begin to paint on his cloth. So this time around, we use the brush tool. I have to be careful so that we don't paint outside the clothes. So we have been able to hide that particular effect on the clothes. So the clothes is now retaining its color. So we are making good progress. So let's zoom out. We are making good progress. I think I have to remove that from this red, this red band he has on his arms as well. So let me go to brush tool and because that red arm is becoming unnecessarily intense, intense with the red. So so this is looking way much better. We can always go back to the adjustment layers and maybe tweak what we don't want that's one of the beautiful things about these um, adjustment layers we can always go back to them and make changes to them so it is a form of non-destructive editing where you can always go back to what you have done and make changes to them So, in as much as our design is getting somewhere, is we are making good progress with our design. I also noticed something. If you look inside the map here, you can see that the background they have here is not the same thing with the background we have. Our background is now way much more darker, and it's almost black. But these guys have backgrounds where they have players that are blurred out. If you look here, you can see face of several players here at the background so that this actually made me realize that the background here is actually not um the one that came with this picture originally so i'm just taking note of that now We can actually change it if we want to. But then, I really want to see if you can do that by yourself. So that will be one of the activities we'll be doing in this exercise. But then I'll give you a, a, a clue on how you can do that. But that will be, let's save that for the last part of this design where I'll be giving you the activity for the project. So the next thing we'll have to add is whatever it takes for the land for Ohio. So by just you can just put that by adding the text, you know, using the text tool and this dash here is just this is just uh, rectangles. You know, you can use this rectangle tool here and add short rectangles, right? And make sure the color is you know, this is blood you can just sample the color by coming here clicking on that ox blood so that you can get exact shade of ox blood so here we have it so that's that for this course see you in the next one
hello guys welcome to this last part we will be finally done with this flyer and all through the previous parts part one part two and part three we have been trying as much as possible to recreate this flyer here on our mood board this flyer of lebron james and so far we have made good progress so one more thing that is remaining for us to actually complete this flyer is if you look closely at our mood board i'm using control plus to zoom in if you let me slide to our mood board so we can have a closer look if you look closely to the original design you notice that there is a shadow below the arms of Le lebron, Je lebron james you can see the shadows right here so that is what we are going to add right now so normally we have two images of lebron james the one with background as in looking here at our layer panel you can see that we have two images of lebron james the one with background and the one without background so the lebron james that carries the shadow or the one that has the shadow is the lebron james without background that's the one that is popping out of the background because the image the shadow is under the arms of lebron james that is the one that is popping outside or the one that is popping out of the map of ohio so that means we have to identify first of all go through our layers and identify that lebron james without background and here it is so i have to click on it instantly it becomes selected on our artboard so let me zoom in a bit i need to be seeing both of them okay no it's too close let me zoom out so here we have our lebron james without background selected then let's try one of the options or one of the methods that i mentioned in the video where i showed you how we can create shadows so we take our hand we take our cursor out of the place where we have the name and double click on this empty space after the name and instantly our layer style panel will pop up so we quickly slide it a bit to the right so that you can see what we are doing here so let's slide it more take it to the side more so we can have a better look let me slide our artboard to the left a bit so whatever effect we are applying here we can be seeing the preview and adjust things accordingly so let's look, go to the drop shadow because that is what we'll be using here look at it here the drop shadow so once we click on the drop shadow instantly notice that there there is shadow already under the arms of leron james so we have to click on the drop shadow itself to get it highlighted so once it's highlighted previously i just checked it but then once i click on the body of or on the body of the text the settings for the drop shadow instantly shows up so we then begin to adjust the settings while looking at the original one to make sure it suits or it fits what we have here in the original flyer or in our mood board first of all let me change the color of our shadow to black we have something gray here but i want to change it to something a bit darker yep i think this works click ok so we now have a darker color for our shadow then we can use this to choose the angle of our shadow so we need to match the angle to what we have here you can even double click hold down and keep rotating it until we get the angle we want okay. 
so 100 looks close to what we have here then one more thing you see that the shadow here is a bit further far away from the hand than ours so i need to adjust the distance of our own shadow and we use the slider to make that adjustment so i move this slider a bit and you can see it's now at 55 so move it to a distance of 55 pixels and i think that's close to what we have here then this angle of 100 so let me adjust this further to 113 okay let's move the angle more let me make this 110 let me click on the box instead and edit the, the numbers I think 110 is okay 110 degrees then let me try adjusting the the size the size of the shadow well I think this 54 50 think 54 is okay we'll leave it at 54 let me go back to the color and maybe try absolute black let me see how that goes uh, i think this is okay i'm leaving it at absolute black so i'm going to adjust the the blend mode i think the settings are okay now the opacity shows us how much of the shadow will be revealing so we can adjust the opacity you know it helps us adjust how much of the shadow will be revealing the intensity of the shadow so i think 27 is okay then we can adjust the blend mode here and let's try multiply Okay, so with this, I think everything is okay. Um, just the same way, we can use several adjustment layers on top of each other. Although we can stack up adjustment layers here too, we can stack up our the styles we can apply. We apply here all the effects in this layer style panel. So we can click on this plus and have a different settings for. We had applied two different shadows here let me adjust the angle the distance of this second one let me adjust the size i want to make the second shadow close closer to the arms Then also, I'm adjusting the angle as well. Then let me increase the size again. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to recreate what we have here. If you look uh, below the right arm of LeBron James, if you look right below this arm, you see that the shadow here is a, a little bit, there's a darker shadow here before the longer shadow that we have here. So you see this darker one below the arm is the one that I'm trying to recreate with this second shadow. And so far, it's not working out well. I guess I have to delete that, this second drop shadow. 
by clicking on this uh, delete button here okay, let me zoom out I think I need to recreate and I, I need to create this with a brush tool instead so let me click OK since we I'm satisfied with what we have on the drop shadow so let me go back to lebron james without background click on it make sure it's highlighted and i make sure that i create a new layer under it because that shadow needs to be under under his arm so i'll have to make sure the shadow is the layer the new layer i'll create for the shadow is in between these two layers here that is right under the lebron james without background so to make that happen i need to click on this layer that is right below the layer of lebron james without background then i click the new layer icon so instantly i now have a new layer in between them so i go to my brush tool click on it make sure i have the right brush i need a soft round brush i click on it then i reduce my size with the left square bracket then i come i make sure that i have the right color here i have green selected then i click on it and change my color to black so i don't have to go to black let me just any color that is close to black but not absolute black so let me zoom in and slide out a bit then i quickly start tapping right around the arms or the armpit of lebron james and you see that instantly this gives us that effect the same effect we have here right below his arms here so we have been able to recreate that let me try one more so i think this is perfect think we are good to go so that's that for this um flyer recreation so so far we have been able to achieve good success with recreating this flyer so we just have the logo of the basketball team and this right up with the signature of lebron james i think these are just what we have remaining so you can add that to your design but then we are done with the major part of this flyer recreation and but through recreating this we have been able to learn so much you've been able to know how to use several tools or several effects in photoshop to actually create this simple effect so as an activity for this course i need you to recreate this flyer all right but then beyond just recreating the flyer i need you, i need you to try something i just want to see how far you can go with it oh, wait i think i need to reduce the opacity of this uh, shadow that we put right below the arms i think it's too intense so why click why this layer is highlighted let's drop the opacity a bit okay i think it's okay now okay so back to what i was saying i said as an activity for this course i need us to i need you to recreate this but then also beyond recreating this i need you to try something i want to see how far you can go with it and if you look at and this is what i'm i mean if you look at the background in our map of ohio you see that it's almost black in fact it's completely black but if you look at the background here 
in our mood board you see that it has people at the background so i need you to add your own flyer redesign i need you to add people inside your own map of ohio instead of having just this black background here i need you to add people inside so these are just simple pictures of uh football fans or just the pictures of the people the audience you know you can actually actually go to uh pixels.com and search for you know football fans you know or uh, basketball i think that's basketball fans let's try basketball basketball fans and you can check out any of the images that suits suits um what we have here at the background then you can bring it in into the map of ohio and you see somehow it's blood so you can actually still go to um our the filter uh, menu here go to blur and go to gaussian blur and blow out that background that you add into the map of ohio so i've already given you uh, a tip of how you can you know achieve that so i want you to try that let me see how how far you can go with that so that's that for the first activity then for the second activity i need you to recreate a different flyer entirely a flyer that uses this same concept that we used here i want you to try recreate it and let me show you the flyer so here is this flyer of another flyer of lebron james where we have him flying into the air and we also have his head here popping out of you know this circle we have some buildings right below his head then we also have the logo of his uh, basketball team here lakers and we have the basketball net right here as well then we have the number 23 and we have this little crown by his head so i also have a shadow below his legs you know that signifies that he's actually jumping above the ground so i need you to recreate this flyer in recreating this flyer you apply the same technique we have used in the previous flyer so all you need to do is just to play around with more adjustment layers then for this lebron james that is jumping up you don't have to use the image of lebron james all right you, you can just go over to pixels.com or um you can go over to pixels.com or freepick.com and look for any image of basketball player that is you know jumping up and use it here you must not use lebron james even here too you can use the image of anybody that you can find it must not be lebron james but then i need the same effect that we have on him we need the same the circle the lakers logo yeah you can use the lakers logo all right you can easily find that online you can even google it you know you can easily get it on google lakers you can get the logo anywhere um especially on google that's where you can get the logo and this basketball here you can get it from free peak or from pixels.com so I need you to recreate this flyer and also if you find any difficulty or encounter any difficulty along the way you can actually reach out to me in the group and i'll assist you but then following 
what I have taught you so far in this course, achieving this should be super easy. So that's that for this course. Um, okay, but before I go, let me quickly show you um, how you can get the jumping. Um, let's go to freepick.com, jumping basketball player, and just type uh, jumping basket ball player jumping basketball player so you see a lot of basketball players we have here that are jumping so you can actually go through them and pick any of the ones that fits what we have there so let's try on pixels um, jumping basket or player you see that as well we have a lot of basketball players jumping so you just go through the pictures and choose the right one that fits what we have here so i'm going to include this image to the course folder so that you can easily have it and add it to your mood board while recreating the flyer so that's that and uh, see you in the next course